What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Dirt Aviation. Hope you guys have a fantastic day today. And today we have the April 2021 Tulsa International Airport update for you guys. I really hope you guys are excited for today's video. Today we have another awesome display of Tulsa International Airport here for you guys today. So like I said, I hope you guys are excited for today's video. And we will begin over here with the Southwest Airlines section. I'm sorry it's kind of poorly lit. Have to get this recorded quick as the clouds are coming in. I uh, definitely wanted to get the most light that we could in here. So yeah, my apologies that it's all kind of side lit, but especially on this navy blue, it doesn't look too good at that angle. But anyways, nevertheless, we're gonna begin down here at Bravo One. We have that Southwest Airlines 737-700 in the Triple Crown One paint scheme. This guy is currently arriving in from Denver International Airport and he'll be taking it over to St. Louis. Following that, pushing back, we have a Southwest Airlines 737-700 heart livery with normal winglets. This guy's uh, pushing back, serves out to Houston Hobby and he came in from Las Vegas. Then on top of your screen, we have a Southwest Airlines 737 800 this guy's currently arriving in from phoenix sky harbor international airport and he's going to be loading up with service out to a dallas love field i believe is the last one so he'll be heading out the dallas love field currently loading up at gate bravo nines is frontier airlines or bus a320 this is griswold the bear currently loading up on the turnaround back out to denver international airport like we talked about in the last update this was uh three weekly and I believe it is going down to two, but still really nice to see uh, Frontier doing really well during these times. My apologies for the poor lighting once again. So anyways, on top of your screen, we have United Express number ERJ-175. We're gonna have this one operate for Mesa Airlines today on the turnaround back down to Houston or Continental. At Bravo 6, we have the United Airlines Bombardier Nace here, D-550 on the behalf of GoJet Airlines. This guy will be taking it back up to Chicago O'Hare on his turnaround. And then at gate B4, we have the United Express Mitsubishi CRJ-200. This guy's gonna be on the behalf of SkyWest Airlines with service uh, back out to Denver. So B4 is still being heavily utilized. They're not utilizing a B10 very much at the current time. So not sure exactly what's going on there, but uh, United mainly using B4, 6, and 8, which are the three gates here. So looking nice. Alrighty, let's make our way over to the Alpha Concourse. Right here we have an Allegiant Air Airbus A319. This guy's currently getting loaded up with service out to this guy. We'll have him go to Las Vegas. Surprised Allegiant hasn't made any announcements. Frontier's been going absolutely insane. They've added all kinds of stuff in the last week, which has been insane to watch. So I'll be eager to see if Allegiant does anything, but Frontier's definitely getting the better of them. And then of course we've got Avello, which is our brand new low cost airline starting out of a uh, big operation out of Burbank to begin, which I'm pumped for them and Breeze and all these other guys to come. I'm really hoping we can get a new airline in here, but man, these new new airlines at last, it's gonna be a bunch of fun to watch. It's gonna be a heck of a dynamic to see. Got a really nice American Airlines section over here. So let's begin at A5 with the American Eagle Bombardier Nace here, day 700 on the behalf of SkyWest Airlines. This guy is currently arriving in from Los Angeles International Airport. It has been 12 months since we've had our Los Angeles flight on American Eagle and it is so great to see it back. Of course, it was on the Compass 175 when we did have it, but unfortunately, Compass fell on April 5th. So SkyWest went into Los Angeles and took over the whole army and it has returned. One daily flight, or I think it may be six weekly and Saturdays not included, but uh, nevertheless, wow. Absolutely phenomenal and really, really glad to see Los Angeles back. These flights are filling as well. Um, mm. Absolutely phenomenal. Very proud of those boys. Um, so pumped to see where Los Angeles goes from here. Brought it back at the perfect time, that's for sure. Then at gates A7 and A9, we have two American Airlines 737-800s. We'll start with the A7, and that is the older GJ. This guy's currently arriving in from Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, and he'll be making that turnaround shortly. And then at A9, we have the Energy Model 737-800. Unfortunately, this will be our final flight for now on the 737 out to Charlotte, as this flight will be the 737 part of it will be downgraded to a Republic Airlines Ember ERJ-175 beginning in May. Uh, we've had a 737 on this flight uh, for a very long time. There was little intermission when the pandemic began, but we've had the 737 here for at least three, four years, something like that. So. Um, really excited to see when it comes back. I'm sure it will be back, uh, especially with all the travel demand there is now. Some of these 737, these latter ones in April for Charlotte have been filling up pretty gosh darn well. So I would definitely uh, put my money on a 737 being back at some point. Uh, just a little intermission for now, but it's gonna be interesting. At least the third daily flight or something. I would at least expect something, but nevertheless, I'll be eager to see what happens there. Seeing a little bit of double right here is on the top side, we have the American Eagle Malbirne Sear Day-700. We're gonna have this fill in for a Mesa Airlines 
CRJ900 was serviced out to Phoenix Sky Harbor. Flight's been doing super well. Uh, it is overnighting now, which is uh, very awesome to see. Um, <clears throat> I will say there will be a custom to fill the void. Um, really, really excited. The custom has been completed. I just want to debut in a Dallas update. I feel like that makes a lot of sense. So very, very excited to get that in here, and that's going to be an awesome addition. Maybe I'll be able to do a normal American Eagle livery, but GJ will release it in a week or something. So uh, it'll be coming soon. <laughs> just kidding. But we'll see. Hopefully. Uh, you never know. Uh, I'm going to be eager to see GJ March get in here. It's going to be insane. And then on the bottom of your screen, we have the American Eagle Ember Ear J-175. That is going to be operated by Republic Airlines today. Republic, or Airways, I should say. Republic Airways has finally made their way into Tulsa for American Airlines. They've been here intermediately uh, with the uh, United Airlines, uh, United Express, I should say, through Chicago O'Hare in the past. However, American Airlines Republic Airways service has never been in Tulsa to my knowledge, and it finally has made its way here. So I believe what happened was I got uh, the misconception because Envoy completely went down to Miami to take over for Republic on the majority of that operation. Uh, I think pretty much all of it, I think there may be a couple of elements, but the majority of it's all Envoy now with the 175s and all those flights that Republic had. Then Republic, uh, I guess they kind of just a little bit of flip-flopped. Uh, I think Republic did, took a lot of Reagan and then um, they kind of filled the void with the PSA CRJ 200s getting retired. And I think they sent quite a few of them up to Chicago because that, from what I've observed, uh, Tulsa being included, Republic has started a bunch, or not started, but added a bunch of flights on the behalf of American Eagle to a bunch of destinations such as Tulsa, Little Rock, I'm sure. There's probably like a Wichita or Kansas City or whatever you would want to say that's involved in there. It's been interesting to see Republic start up these very interesting hubs that started from nothing uh, like Atlanta for Delta Connection as uh, they went in there to fly one route to Hilton Head on 175 and now all of a sudden they have dozens of routes I think. Something like that. They have quite a few if not. And then you got um, of course American with, with Chicago for Republic as Republic was never at Chicago and then all of a sudden American came in with the Republic of course and now they have all these flights. So subsidiary movements are definitely something that is absolutely insane but very fun to watch. I'm gonna be eager to showcase this history throughout time. So very, very interesting and I'm really, really pumped for more stuff to come. The uh, GJ model that 175 actually is a Republic Airways uh, when it was made and it should still be a Republic. So very, very cool to see that. And here we go with the Delta Airlines section at gate A6. We have the Delta Connection Bombirne CRJ-700. Little sneaky appearance. This one's going to be operating for SkyWest Airlines today on the turnaround back up to Salt Lake City. Uh, SkyWest does not have many of these left. Um, from what the wiki says, I believe they're supposed to be getting removed, the Delta Airlines ones. I thought it was. It was either them or Endeavors. Uh, Endeavor has a few left and SkyWest has a few left, but they're pretty hit or miss. Uh, and then, of course, Republic doesn't operate any CRJs for Delta Connection. Uh, just the ERJ variant. So not many Delta CRJ 700s left floating around. Definitely wanted to include one just to have a little fun with it, you know. Uh, glad to get a Delta CRJ 700 in here, but I think there's only like a combined between Republic, sorry, whoa, 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 Endeavor and SkyWest. I think there's only maybe like 20, 25, something like that. So it's a very limited number at this point, but thought I'd throw one in here because why not? They do sub in a little bit, but not very much. Uh, maybe on average, maybe once a week on two daily flights. Uh, and then we have a Delta Airlines uh, Boeing 717-200. This guy's currently arriving in from Lance Hartsfield Jackson. Two daily 717s and two daily Endeavor Air CRJ 900s now. So definitely not a horrible frequency whatsoever. Uh, the two 717 flights are the overnight flight and the, uh, I think it's a 1030 arrival. It's 10 or 11, something like that. And then the four and six o'clock arrivals are the Endeavor Air CRJ 900. So uh, Delta Republic's never been at Tulsa. If you guys are wondering, it's always been SkyWest and uh, Delta Compass, I do not believe flew here at any time. Uh, Northwest of subsidiaries way back when. Actually, yeah, yeah, uh, Compass, I think, was actually in the Midwest at a point with Northwest, so maybe way back when, but as for Delta, not to my knowledge. But mainly SkyWest and then, um, of course, Endeavor and whoever Delta may have had in the past, but uh, oh, Express Jet probably would have made it in here at some point. That Delta CRJ 700 model is actually an Express Jet, so very cool, but. That's, a, that's probably enough on subsidiaries. I'm sure you guys know uh, the basics. So I'm sure you guys know the subsidiaries. So I'll, I'll stop talking, but let's continue. Alrighty, so here's our cargo section. Gonna be very eager to see how cargo progresses with uh, leisure travel, especially being super, super big right now. 
going to be eager to see if it continues to uh, skyrocket uh, or what happens. But I, I'm sure it won't completely drop off by any means. Uh, maybe a little bit compared to what it was, but I think it's still going to be very, very critical. And there's going to be a lot of cargo movement. So we got four uh, air, cargo aircraft in the frame, I should say. Uh, the UPS 767 is the one that's taxiing all the way back there. I'll get a better view of that in a minute. But anyways, here are the aircraft that we have currently presented. So all these four main cargo flights come in within an hour of each other. So the FedEx 757 typically comes in at 420, then the UPS 757 at, uh, let's see here, sorry, 507, the UPS 767 at 509, and the FedEx 767 300 at uh, 530. So typically mix and match. Now the cargo apron I believe has four slots and FedEx will usually park both the aircraft on their ramp and UPS will park their aircraft on this side, which is this is their actual ramp, I should say, and Kalita parks over here too. Now, um, I'll give more uh, detail towards the end, but we do have some really nice progression on the custom mat that is being done for Tulsa and Reno. Um, hoping, my plan is if possible to get it in here for May, but we're just gonna have to keep tabs on it. I'm not quite sure if it's gonna be ready, but um, I'll talk about that more towards the end of the video. So anyways, uh, let's start with the uh, FedEx Express Boeing 757-200 up there. This guy currently is arriving in from Fort Worth, and these go out to a variety of destinations typically. Uh, today we went out to, scheduled for Fort Worth tonight, so we'll send them out to Fort Worth. Then we got FedEx Express Boeing 767-300 freighter currently making that Memphis turn. Uh, looking very good right there. And the UPS 757-200 currently getting ready to push back. This guy just arrived in from Little Rock as usual. And these have been going out, uh, today's went out to Ontario, so we'll send them to Ontario, but they kind of go to a variety of places. Uh, it's been fun to watch. Uh, tomorrow's is also going to Ontario, so Ontario it is. And then the uh, UPS Boeing 767-300 way back there in the far ground. He's currently arriving in from Louisville, and he'll be making that turnaround, so yeah. Hopefully we'll get a FedEx DC-10 again at some point. I'll be very excited to see that. But let's take a look at the uh, American Airlines Hangar 5 and kind of get a little rundown on those situations. And then finally for the update, we have three American Airlines aircraft over here at Hangar 5. We have two 737-800s. Uh, we'll just say one's coming in from Boston. And I saw another one. Where was that one coming in from? Uh, there was a very interesting destination on there. What was it? Sorry, guys. Uh, Fort Myers. Yeah, for one for Fort Myers. That will definitely do for this update. So he will be coming in from Fort Myers. Then we got Boeing 77-9. This guy's currently arriving in from maintenance uh, a couple days ago from Dallas, Fort Worth. And he'll take it back in about a week after the sea check, full procedure, and all that. American Airlines has we're down to one grounded aircraft. Um, TEL Aviator on Instagram, or otherwise known as Logan, as we've seen in the spotting vlogs, he informed me, he sent me a video of Atlantic completely cleared. Piedmont went back and the other three 319s, which is absolutely insane. Um, <clears throat> so I went spotting twice, uh, March 19th and March 28th. In March, I should say, I went spotting twice in March. On March 19th uh, and March 28th, both the, or all four aircraft were at Atlantic. So those will be my final time seeing them. And then Piedmont, the little, um, I guess little, uh, I'm not even sure what you'd call it at this point, situation there, uh, and then three 319s. And then at Hangar 5, we did not look at it on March 19th, but on March 28th, uh, at Hangar 80, yeah, Hangar 80, sorry, Hangar 80, there was an American Airlines A319 November 892 Alpha Whiskey, and that plane is still at Hangar 80 from what I've been informed. So that is the final aircraft still grounded at Tulsa International Airport, one A319. A year ago, we had 80 plus aircraft. Now we only have one airplane grounded, and I'm sure it's gonna be lifting off maybe as this video um, goes out. I mean, that thing is probably not gonna make it much longer. Lone 319 at Hangar 80, and that's it, guys. Everything else has returned to service. Uh, leisure travel's going insane. And I mean, guys, no, loads aren't gonna lie. Every flight's going out full. Stillwater Regional Airport is sending out 145s every day full or very close to it, I should say 90% plus. And then observations have been made for other airports that don't usually thrive on leisure travel, like Champaign Internet, a Champaign Regional Airport, I should say. We saw AS Aviation's uh, 145 trip report. That thing was nearly full. I think you said 90 plus percent. Um, so, I mean, at this point, it's insane to see the amount of progression. And then all of Tulsa, uh, all of Tulsa flights, it appears to be, are going out full, especially Los Angeles, Phoenix, and Dallas but as well as Chicago and Charlotte are also doing really good. Delta's loads have been phenomenal, especially Atlanta, I need to look at SLC. Can't check Allegiant or Southwest loads. Um, I wish you could, but you cannot. Uh, and then United's look to be pretty solid. I need to check theirs more often. Um, 
And then, of course, Frontier, you can't check theirs either. But when you can check, uh, you can check what you can check, and I checked what I could, and it still looks phenomenal. So I have to think that things are definitely progressing very, very good. Also, the amount of daily departures and stuff has went way up just from looking at flight aware and flight radar numbers, um, just incredible. Um, I'm not, I don't think that we're even close to done with the pandemic. Uh, there's still gonna be tons of losses in terms of people, aircraft, and everything in between, and uh, maybe a few more particular things. Um, like, for example, the only thing that has not returned to Tulsa at this point is the Delta Minneapolis service, and I have a good feeling that'll come back probably in June or so. So, yeah, uh, that will do it for today's update. I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about the uh, Tulsa renovation, I'm gonna call it, uh, which is very, very exciting, and we'll kind of go into that real quick, and then we will conclude this video. So as I'm, I mentioned previously in the last few airport updates and the channel update, for the last many months, I've been uh, trying to get a custom mat done for this airport. Uh, gonna be an absolute facility. We got a lot of really cool stuff on the mat. It, it looks really, really nice. One-to-one uh, -one scale. Uh, really nicely done. It's gonna be something quite unique, so I'm very, very excited for that. It has currently been worked on quite a bit, which I'm very pleased. Uh, the progress that has been made on it has been very good. So here's kind of the uh, format of what I'm looking to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do is there's gonna be, it's gonna be a video called the Tulsa Renovation. So I'll kind of explain what's going on here. So the Tulsa Renovation will be a full on renovation to Tulsa International Airport, my model airport diorama. So the first and foremost thing is we're gonna be talking about the brand new mat that will be coming in. So um, we're gonna be analyzing the mat uh, with some uh, screenshots that we have of the, of the mat uh, through the, um, before it's printed in uh, Photoshop. So we're gonna be analyzing those and kind of just uh, explaining uh, some new elements that will become Tulsa International Airport. Uh, a lot of it, there's gonna be a lot of the same areas. However, there's gonna be some new sections that I'm very excited about, mainly two that are gonna be very pivotal, but there will be quite a lot of stuff. Um, there's gonna be some uh, even more stuff to come. I integrated some factors that are gonna be brand new. So there's gonna be some really, really cool stuff there. So I'm very pumped about that. Um, as for the concourse buildings, um, I think we're gonna have those renovated. I've talked to the funny pilot, but I haven't, um, I'm not sure if we've made much progress on that yet or not. I need to reconsult there and see if we're, how we're doing on that. But the plan is to get a full new uh, Tulsa International Airport concourse set up. Those concourses are a little bit wore, wore out, I should say, pardon me, but they're not too bad. So. Um, yeah, really, really excited. Um, and then Reno, uh, what my plan is to, is to use, um, <clears throat> it's kind of hard because as of right now, the mat will entail three pieces and the one piece is going to be the concourse and, um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to change it. Uh, I would like the concourse to be just one piece, just like Reno is just to make it easy. Like that big four by four I have over there, just the concourse. But uh, as of right now, I'm not sure if we'll be able to do four individual sections. Uh, I would like to, but we'll have to see. Um, but as of right now, Reno will be on the same board. Uh, it will be a one-to-one -one Tulsa, but uh, they're so similar that I'll be able to throw a gate apron on and call that a uh, W with uh, Reno to make it into Reno. So it'll be slightly different, but ultimately not too, too bad. So I'll be consulting on that and hopefully I can make that concourse its own thing. But. Um, I'm not sure if this will be the final update on my current boards for Tulsa and Reno. I think we'll probably do one more in May, um, depending on how the progress of the videos are coming because we're gonna have a, a uh, renovation video, the announcement kind of similar to the Richmond announcement, and then we'll have the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, sorry guys, uh, unboxing of the mats, and then we'll debut the mats. Uh, so I'm not quite sure yet, but I'll keep you guys informed on that. Uh, so maybe June, but it will be very, very soon. As long as, uh, the progress that the, as long as the progress that we're currently making continues at the rate that's at, then the mat will be complete. Um, I think that is everything guys. Uh, speaking of Richmond, just haven't had time to construct it. Uh, we may be looking at about June at this point. I'll keep you guys informed on that. But as of right now, just simply been way too busy to get a start on it. 
I'm hoping for June, but I'll keep you guys informed. Uh, same thing for San Del Cabo. That project will continue to be pushed back. Uh, not the worst thing in the world anyways. I, I kind of want to start that when it's not peak season and then have a really nice peak season. So my plan for that is about July, but we'll have to keep... Um, We'll have to keep uh, tabs on that. But as of right now, very, very excited for what's to come, and I hope you guys are excited. So, yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. One thank you guys so much for watching. Take it easy, everybody. Stay safe, trust the process. Do what you love and love what you do. My name is Redditor of Aviation. want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. As Redditor of Aviation is signing off.